class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about areas of parallelograms, triangles, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Heron's formula. So to get started, let's just go over our basic formulas. Area of a rectangle, if we're given the base and the height of the rectangle, it's just going to be base times the height. Area of a square, and remember squares are always rectangles, so you can think of it like base times height, but since sides of a square are always congruent, we can also think of it as the side length of the square and then squaring that uh, length, so S squared. All right, area of a parallelogram, now if we take a rectangle and just kind of smush it to the side, the area is actually going to stay the same, uh, or, or you can think of it like staying the same, even though it's a little smushed. So we're still going to have the same formula, base times height, but we always need to make sure that our height is perpendicular to the base. So here, as you can see in the diagram, the height is perpendicular to the base. And it can be inside, it could also be drawn outside of our figure like that. So you can think of it in two different places there. All right, and then area of a triangle, given the base, and then again, the height always has to be perpendicular to our base. We have one half base times height for the area of a triangle, or base times height divided by two. All right, let's go through a few examples here. We have what is the area of this parallelogram. So we're going to look at the information they give us, make sure we have the same units. We always want to make sure we're dealing with the same units, which in this case is centimeters. And then we want to look for the base and then the height, making sure the height is perpendicular. So if we look, this length here is perpendicular to the base, so we're going to be using 10 and 6 and just ignoring the 8 centimeters on the side. We don't need it for the area. So in this case, our area would be 60 centimeters squared. All right, our second example, we have another parallelogram, but this time it's asking us to find the length of DE. So here, I'll mark that with an X on our diagram. Now, if we look at what we have, I mean, we can think about right triangles, but we don't quite have enough information to solve based on just a right triangle. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to find the area of the figure and then kind of uh, use that area to find x. So if we look, we have this base here, dA. Remember, a base can be any side of the parallelogram, not just the one on the bottom. It can be any side. So if I use AD as my base, then this length here is going to be perpendicular to that base. So I can find my area taking 13 times 9. And 13 times 9 is 117 inches squared. So my area is 117 inches squared. Now if we look, we also have another pair of a base and a height. Let me switch colors so you can see. If I decided that AB was my base, then this length here would be my height. And because it's the same parallelogram, it's actually going to be the same area. So what I can do is I can take that area, 117, and set it equal to the base of 9.4 times its perpendicular length, which is the height x. So I can use the area and make a formula or an equation, sorry, um, to find x. And then if I divide by 9.4, x is going to be approximately, let's see, to the nearest tenth, we get 12.4 inches. All right, so just kind of working around the, the problem there. Okay, uh, our next example, lots of examples today. We have find the areas of the following figures. First, we have a triangle. So remember, our area is 1 half base times height. But if we look, our base and our height which are perpendicular to each other, and they're both legs of our triangle, since it's a right triangle, they don't have the same units. So I need to change the units first in order to be able to find my area. And technically, it doesn't matter which direction you change them, either both into inches or both into feet, but sometimes one is going to be a little easier than the other. If I change one foot into 12 inches, then my two lengths are both whole numbers. If I instead decided to change five inches into feet, I would have a decimal to work with. Okay, so let's see, one half, my base is now 12 inches, my height is five, and multiplying those together, I have, let's make our page a little extended here, I have area is 30, and then my units are inches, because I changed them both into inches, 
and we always square our units when we find the area. Okay, and last example on this page, we have a uh, figure here with a square and then a triangle on top. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find the area of each one separately and then add them together. Now since it shows us with these tick marks here that these sides are all the same, that means this length is also 6 inches. So if I find the area of my square, it's going to be 6 squared, which is 36 inches squared. All right, and then the area of my triangle is going to be 1 half base length, which is 6, times the height, which is 8, and that's going to be 24 inches squared. So now my total area of this figure is going to be 36 plus 24, which will give us 60 inches squared. Okay, so there's just a few examples for you on how to use our formulas for area. Now let's talk about Heron's formula. So this formula is really different. It looks really uh, complicated, but once you practice, you'll get the hang of it. So here, if you know only the sides of a triangle, then there's a special formula called Heron's formula. Oops, my writing got a little sloppy there. Let's write that again. Formula, all right, that allows you to find the area without knowing a base or the height. So sometimes we'll have a triangle, like you see here in the example, where I have all three lengths of the sides, but I don't know how much this height is. And I really have no way of finding that out since I'm not given any angles or anything else to work with. So this formula gives us a way to find the area without needing the height. So here we have a formula, A equals the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Now S is what we call the semi-perimeter of a triangle. Um, and what a semi-perimeter is, it's half of the perimeter. So you can think like a semicircle is half of a circle. A semi-perimeter is half of a perimeter. All right? Or if we have side lengths A, B, and C, you can find that by adding the sides together and then dividing by 2. And then we have this formula. So it's going to take a little bit of practice to really get this formula memorized, but I know you guys can do it. All right, so let's apply this to a, a, an example and see how it works. So first what I need to do is I need to find, so, so find S. So S is going to be the semi-perimeter, 4 plus 9 plus 7, all divided by 2. So that's 20 divided by 2, oops, divided by 2, which is 10. So my semi-perimeter for this example is going to be 10. So now I can use that. And my side lengths, A, B, and C, are going to be the side lengths, and plug it into my formula. So I have 10, and then times 10 minus 4, times 10 minus 9, times 10 minus 7. And then we're going to simplify. So I have the square root of 10 times 6 times 1 times 3. Okay, so now breaking it into primes, I have 2 times 5, and 2 times 3 times 3. And then I can simplify my uh, square root. And if you're not sure what I'm doing and you have your own method of simplifying square roots, that's just fine. All right, so here I have 2 times 3 and then the square root of 5 on the inside or 6 root 5. And then I look for my units, which were centimeters. I'm finding area, so I always want to square those units. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.